So in six um, in section six point five, we just elaborate um, the multiple relationships that are indicated when we have a balanced chemical equation. So we've already seen this content um, before. We're just really stressing its importance here. So what do I mean by mole to mole relationships? Well, what I'm talking about is when I have a balanced chemical equation something like this where I have the same number of atoms of each type on both of the um, both sides of the arrow I have the relationships between all of the reactants and the products spell out for me so I know that for every one mole of Fe2O3 consumed I will also consume two moles of aluminum. I know that for every two mole of Fe produced, I will consume one mole of Fe2O3. And the reason that I know this is because I have my reaction coefficients. So this is how I'm going to kind of establish the relationships between the number of moles of each product and each reactant. So I can write one of these mole ratios for any two things that appear in my balanced chemical equation. And that's the cool thing about a balanced chemical equation. So if you have a balanced chemical equation, you can always determine how much product you have, you are able to make from a given amount of reactant using our mole ratio. So I'm going to be talking about the combustion of um, methane here. So here's my balanced equation. And it says if I if two moles of methane is reacted with oxygen, how much water is produced? So two of these guys, how many of those guys and I'm, am I going to produce? And it's real easy because I can establish the mole ratio. I know that I'm going to produce two moles of water for every one mole of methane consumed. So if I'm consuming two moles of methane, then I just multiply that by the appropriate mole ratio that converts moles of water into moles of methane. So I know that I get two moles of water for every one mole of methane. And there we go. This is telling me that I could make at most four moles of water. Pretty straightforward. Here's one um, where we have a slightly different equation. This is called the oxidation of iron. We're reacting solid iron with gaseous oxygen. We're going to basically form rust here, which is a solid. And um, this, uh, the mole ratio between iron and the product here is a 4 to 2 ratio according to our balanced chemical equation. So if I react 3 moles of iron, the question is how much Fe2O3 could I produce? And this is like relatively straightforward to um, answer. Three moles of iron, and then I've got to multiply this by the appropriate mole ratio. And I know that I make two moles of the product for every four moles of the iron that I react. So I get two moles of Fe2O3 for every four moles of iron. So just checking that my units cancel out. And there I go. I'm going to get one and a half moles of Fe2O3. So we've been using this concept for um, a little while now, but it's just kind of important to revisit it and uh, think a little bit um, about it uh, once more. Of course, we can go from um, reactants to products, but we could also go from products back into reactants. In fact, we could even go between two reactants or between two products. It really doesn't matter. As long as we have the balanced chemical equation, we can relate the moles of any two things. So here we go. Here's one going from a product back to the reactant. So it says, if I want to make 5.8 moles of Fe2O3, how many moles of O2 are required? Pretty simple number of moles of Fe2O3, so or, or, sorry, that should say O2, shouldn't it? There we go. Will be equal to, we've got, we're starting with 5.8 moles of Fe2O3, and then we just need the mole ratio that relates Fe2O3 to O2. And I can see here that I get three moles of O2 for every two moles of Fe2O3. 
and you multiply by that rank mole ratio and then sure enough leaves me with 8.7 moles of O2 so you know simple concept but um, it's important to have it um, you know down tight okay so what are we doing it's pretty simple if we want to convert from moles of substance A to moles of substance B then we're just going to multiply by the coefficient of B what is what we call our unknown divided by the coefficient of our a what we call our known and that's it really so you know moles of a and if i write apply that by uh, this is going to be the moles of b whatever that might be for every mole of a what will that, that be and you can see that it just leaves me with my moles of b okay so just a brief review of how we relate the moles of one thing to the moles of another thing within a chemical reaction. Hope you found the video helpful.